back here painting a couple more samples for the library, but we are getting there thanks to all of you. But we have come up with a decision. So we are going to go, and we're gonna go into the library in a little bit later to look at all of this. We're gonna go for Kensington Rose on the walls. Now originally, do you remember I thought, oh, well that will look good on the woodwork, but I've decided and many of you also commented that this would actually look really good. It's a lovely warm color. It has a little hint of that rose. Would go great on the walls. And for the woodwork, and this was a surprise to me, but once I decided on the wall color, I kind of went back through the samples. We are gonna go bold here, and we're gonna go gentleman's pink for the um, skirting all around. So, and the door as well, so, and the door frame. So, gentleman's pink. So, we're gonna go back in the library and look at this. However, up above in the library, you have the Rococo ceiling, which we'll look at, and then you've got the frieze below it. I'm not going to touch that, that's Georgian. I'm not going to paint that. But just below the frieze, there is actually a picture rail. Now, the question is, do I paint it in with the wall color, the picture rail, Kensington Rose, or do I paint it a white, almost the same color as the freeze. Now, this is probably isn't gonna make sense to you. We're gonna look in the library in a second. But what I want to do now is I'm just gonna use the back of these mounting cards because I'm not using Fitzrovia, Threadneedle, or Soho Pink. And I'm just gonna paint over them with this white. My plan with the blue, which I'm gonna paint uh, on these remaining two cards, is to actually paint the inside of the bookcases this dark color. Now, I think Ooh, I'm kind of getting excited about this. This one's called Maritime by Mylands and it has a hint of gray in it as well. Okay, so pretty, really, really pretty. And this one's called Mayfair Dark. A bit more, hmm, I mean, they are similar. I think I already can tell which one I'm going to like more, but I need to see them in the library before I make that decision. It's still a lovely warm color, but I think it, it's a bit too blue for me. And I quite like the gray that comes out of this blue, but again, you need to see in the light, in the library. The honest truth, we are getting older and we cannot press pause on our body clock. However, we can perhaps slow down the effects of stress, environmental factors, and living a fast paced life by making sleep a priority. And while sleeping, fight and prevent sleep wrinkles and morning puffiness. And let me preface by saying that sleep wrinkles are different from expression and aging wrinkles, although they may look the same. Sleep wrinkles are caused by repeated pressure on your face when sleeping on your side or your stomach. They are vertical wrinkles, whereas expression wrinkles are mostly horizontal. And with age, these horizontal wrinkles become permanent. Sleep wrinkles are formed around the eyes, nasolabial folds, and forehead. So what is the solution? Well, it's the Sleep and Glow Pillow, which is designed by orthopedists. This pillow, made of memory foam, has two side cradles that help to reduce the space and friction between your face and the pillow itself. So that helps to prevent sleep lines and morning puffiness. The pillow is handmade in Italy from high quality materials. Therefore, the face skin is floating in air and not being compressed and folded during sleep. I've been using mine for a few months and have noticed a healthier, better sleep because the Amia Sleep and Glow Pillow ensures an anatomically correct body position during sleep. I've also noticed less morning puffiness, which I am so happy about. And Botox, those injections, and even premium night creams cannot fight sleep wrinkles, but cost much more than the pillow. Plus, Amia Sleep and Glow offers a 30-day sleep trial money-back guarantee. The brand did a study, and it turns out that I'm not the only one with this effect. In 82% of cases, sleep wrinkles were reduced after just three months of sleeping on the pillow, and in some cases, 
wrinkles completely disappeared. Click the link in the description below to get your Amia Sleep and Glow pillow today for a healthier, better sleep. Guess what, everybody? We have Luke in person today. He's not on the phone. <laughs> it's definitely so, me. I'm it's, definitely here. It's definitely you. So we are coming close to deciding the paint colors here in the library. And it, I don't know if we're going to make a final decision today, but I think we're going to come close to it. We need your help because I suspect there's going to be a slight difference in view. What I'm thinking is when it gets darker as well, you have to look at these at sort of different times of day, but Kensington Rose, I originally thought would work, but now I actually really like it for the wall color. I think it's smart. It has a little bit of hint of that, of rose in there, red, ro yeah. I quite like that. The question is, is of course now the skirting. Okay. This is your wall color, okay? Yeah. This is the Kensington Rose and this gets the thumbs up from me. I, okay. I now like what, that. What I liked is I liked this color, which is has elements of sort of peach and pink, of course, for the woodwork. So that's what I would like. But right. there's and another option, there's another option, and I always wanted to go lilac, that was my grand plan, was to have, this is called pale lilac, and you could do that as well. But I think it's too lilac-y. I think that's too pink. I know, I don't know whether it comes across here, but for me, this, this, this is the same one we had before? Yeah. I mean, it looks less pink in the light here. I don't think I could cope. No, I think with, that's too lilac-y. With all of, all of the, um, the doors and the woodwork being painted. No. The lilac color. I agree. Because I actually, I also like, can I say something that's controversial? Well, in terms of your choices, I would prefer that the timber is a lighter colour, that the doors and the frames and the shutters and the skirting is a lighter colour and that the wall is a darker colour, which is kind of what we've got at the moment. I don't know if you can see. So we could do Kensington Rose. So you could do Kensington Rose. On the woodwork. On the woodwork. And then the question is, <laughs> what, what you do, do you for the wall colour. The walls. And, and here I'm, I could imagine, I could imagine that. But no, it's quite pink, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so, well, okay. But, so, that, and that was the other option, wasn't it? That we go. Yeah, but you don't want the no, woodwork. I want, I want it the other way yeah. around. So what about that? Well, that's. That's, the, then that goes dark, Luke. That's, yeah, that's too dark, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. You oh, see. Oh dear. Right. We're we going to get the other options. Or is this it? No, I mean, I can get... This is it. I can, I can get some more paint samples. Wait, 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 what's this one? That's just, that's Holland Park white. That's okay, going... let me try that. No, 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 okay. No, 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 no I've, not... got, I've got an idea. No, Holland no. Park is going on... Can I just make a suggestion? Kensington Rose for the walls, yeah? And Holland Park white yes. for the timber. I'm happy with that. That's actually what I originally thought in my head. Was it? Yes, I actually... Yes, but then I thought you might have wanted a color. No. 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 <gasps> okay. Yes. I'm that, in agreement okay. with that. Okay. I'm okay. actually in agreement with that. I mean, they're, yes. They're kind of. No, they won't be. They won't be. They won't be that. It's it, it actually, I've seen pictures from Mylands. I'm going to okay. show them to you. Okay. And it looks really smart okay. with the Kensington Rose. Okay. And then the Holland Park. Okay. Wow. Can you believe it? We seem to have made a decision subject to everybody agreeing. Because if you don't agree, we're going to have to So I have a couple more scratch. questions though. I have a couple more questions. So this but is- It does look very No, no, similar. no, they're not going to be. They won't be and I'm going to show you photos. Can people tell the difference? You can't see it on camera. You, you, you will be able to. You, 100% okay. okay, there's okay, a difference. Okay. It's going to look great. Next is then, what we're thinking is the inside of the book cover. Is one, one or other uh, Inside of the book cases. Okay, it's one of these. So, so, so if I just remove these, yeah. Okay, so the first one is like that. You don't need to do more than that. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Okay, so wait, hold on. No, no. Yeah, I know. 
hold on. Here we go. So the go. first one, now it's also the shelf. So we do the shelves that color as well. Okay, Remember so that. bear so in mind that it'll always be quite dark at the back. But you won't, I don't know, what do you do this? Yeah, this you thing? do the shelves, okay. it's exactly okay. what we do. Okay, we do the and then the second one. Is my favorite. Is like that. 100%. Okay, and I prefer that one too. Yeah, that and, is smart. And hopefully everybody else prefers that one as well, well because- that, that one's called Maritime. Because even if they don't, we're gonna go with that one. So, so because do you see how smart that could be? Yeah. And then you've got the Holland Park here. Let yeah. me just pull. And it's a, it is a kind of um, ocean blue, isn't it? It's called Maritime. But that is more of a kind of Caribbean sea color. Mm -hmm. And that is- So then more. if you have the bookcases in that, yeah. Then you've got the shelves that, yeah. and then you can see, now you can definitely see the difference between these two colors. I can. I can't. Oh my gosh, I 100% okay. can. Okay. I mean, yep. I can a bit, a little bit, yeah. I think it's gonna look super smart. Right, at this point, I'm gonna hand this all back to you, and So um, we've decided on three colors. Good choices. This is another big day at Mapperton, and it's big because it's the start of the removal of the pheasant pens from across the estate. Yeah. In fact, we're a bit late to the party because I can see that some of it has already been removed, but they're going to be very grateful for our assistance. What, what have we got to do, Ben? So yeah, all the posts and all the other bits of wire have been removed, but we've got a, quite a lot of chicken wire that's been dug in. Um, or it's been grown over by all the grass. Um, so we're gonna try and use the mule and see if we can pull it out with a strap and see if we can just pull it, pull it all away. So Ben has got a cunning plan. Might not work. Might not work. Might not, because the power of the mule might just snap all the, all the wire, we don't know. Yeah, okay. Well, we're gonna get down to it and see if we can have some success removing with the might of the mule all of the remainder of this pheasant pen. Let's see how we get on. So we got this end. Where do you think this is going to go on? Yeah, I just think just put it on, on those on those bits there, and then something like that. Yeah, like that. You think that's tough enough? That should be tough enough. And I'll we'll try it's, and make sure it's, it's all pretty tough stuff. This webbing, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So you can I mean, see how yeah. how how well it's grown in. Can't how you? how is that gonna? Um, so what I'll do is I'll go and grab the wire wire cutters, and I can cut a bit. Yeah. So this pheasant pen has been here probably 20 years and you can see over time all of the wire has just been the grass has just grown over it it's kind of thatched its way over the top I don't know whether we can even just get down to the bottom of this or whether it's so dug in now part of the reason that we're doing this here apart from just getting rid of redundant fencing is that we've got a bit of an experiment going on in this field and in the same way that you can see there are two sides to the fence here um, we're going to be putting in a deer fence along the whole of the edge of the wood here and the reason for that is that we want to look at the extent to which we get natural regeneration with and without deer pressure if there's a deer fence the deer won't be able to get in and it's the deer that are responsible for eating all of the green shoots, particularly the natural regeneration of tree species that we might hope to have coming out of the woods here. Um, and that will tell us something. It'll tell us whether the deer pressure is so high that it's getting in the way of natural regeneration or whether in fact there isn't too much difference between the two areas. So quite a few of the things that we're doing here at Mapperton are experiments to try and understand more about the processes and the timing of the different interventions here for rewilding, when we should be allowing different animals in in order to maximize the opportunity for regeneration, for kick-starting nature recovery. Do I get to drive? You get to drive, yeah. I hope so. Because uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of you're try gonna, and persuade it as you drive, drive on as you're well. You're going to coax it? Yeah. Right. Come on, come on.
That wasn't a disaster. It wasn't a disaster, no. What happened in the end? It's just, it's it just, snapped. A, just snapped the wire, just because it's too, too, too brittle. Dug in. Yeah. But did we get, did we get it out here? Yeah, we got the, we got the majority of it out. So that was, that was actually working, wasn't it? Yeah. So we'll um, tie it on again and we'll have another go. Have another go, I think. It is working, to, but we need to get it all out there. It wasn't bad. We just need to get all of it underneath though. I was getting a bit carried away. Well, is it working? Sort of. It's not really digging it out. What? Yeah. It was sort of just all like ripping it off. Yeah, it's just it's just ripping it off the top, yeah. isn't it? So are we serving any purpose? Oh wait, wait, wait. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to just uh, do it all by hand. All right. Okay, come on. It's going. It's going. Oh my God, there's a lot of it, isn't there? See, if we could get under this. Yeah, if you could get under that bit. Look how, oh my goodness. This goes on and on and on, doesn't it? If we got under. If we go under there. Then, then you see, we can start to peel it back. Yeah. Can't we? There you go. Okay, we, you know what then, we nearly gave up there. Can we, we nearly gave can up. Can we be honest? I think if we, if we just go a little bit straighter, then hopefully straighter. The, the plan right. is it, it, that it just should roll up on itself. You don't want to sack me as you're driving? No, no, not at all. Not okay. at all. No, no, I'm I, not, I could I'm take it. You. I'm not sacking you but at you all. But you have to have Chris instead. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd much rather have you than yeah, Chris. Yeah, I thought you would. Yeah. yeah. Good choice. I could sort of tug of war. <laughs> tug of war. I really thought we'd get here, we'd attach it to one simple place, and it would be like opening a can of beans. You just go around and it all neatly comes out. It's not like that. It's at not all, like is that it? at all. No. It's like not having a can opener, but having you ever open a can of beans with a screwdriver where you've got to like go around bit by bit by bit. That's what it's like. <sighs> well, that didn't last long. No, it didn't. Yeah. What um, happened there? I think we're going to have to probably we we'll have to get the digger in to do this. I think. You think the digger? I think so. Okay. I was I was being very ambitious and thinking we wouldn't need to get a digger in, but. Back in my happy place, the Minimit room, where I can conserve so many of our family's archives. And, but if you look up above, the ceiling is still peeling off. I'm waiting for that commercial dehumidifier to arrive any day now. And once that arrives, then I will be back up on the ladder and repairing the ceiling. But I'm just waiting for this proper uh, dehumidifier to arrive start let it start to do its work and then I can start to do my work but in the meantime what I'm going to do is use these uh, silica gel packs and put them into the three metal tins that you see behind me and that will at least for the time being allow 
some of the uh, moisture that's inside of these to be absorbed. I need to go through all the papers there. I will be putting them into proper uh, acid-free archive boxes, uh, which act if you've never seen those before, I can just quickly show you. So these are ready for the letters within these uh, metal cases to be put in here. But what I want to do before I put them in here is to actually draw out the moisture. And that's gonna take weeks, everybody. So it's gonna take weeks. I'm also going to be going back to trying to conserve some of the leather. So today I'll be working on this uh, box here, which who knows what it held, but it's got, well, now it's holding keys and bits, um, but it has, again, lovely velvet here, a little bit of marbling paper around here. I'm just gonna be working on the leather, but this has the initials of WD. This was Alberta, our American heiress's, her second born son, William Drogo, who served for the RAF, the Royal Air Force, under uh, George VI. That's why you can see GR, so that's George Rex. So I have this and I just wanna conserve a little bit around, I can see some red rot appearing. Same with uh, this as well. You can see H for Hinchingbrook, the coronet there, but you can also see the red rot and some repair that needs to happen around um, here. The inside is actually in really good shape, probably because it hasn't been exposed to the elements as much. So I'm just gonna be, again, using the Cellugel to conserve that. In the meantime, let's open up these tins. So again, what I want to do is I want to be able to draw out the moisture. So I'm gonna be super careful. I don't wanna put these on the papers themselves. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got space around the side and then drop them in so that they're not touching papers. I'm gonna do about eight each box and these are five grams. So I'm gonna be doing in total 40 grams um, in each of these. Um, and, that, that, and then I'll be checking them sort of every couple of weeks. So I'm just gonna drop them in places where there is an opening. And we're gonna check back on these in uh, an episode, a future episode. And we'll look at, again, how they feel. So they should, once I pull them out, um, after a few weeks, I should be able to feel the moisture. Um, so I'm just gonna pull that there because we've got lots of space. I should be able to feel the moisture from these, which is great. That means it's working, um, which is exactly what we want. There we go, that there. All right, last one. And this is really my Alberta file. So until I'm able to, to draw out some moisture, I'm not going to be putting them into their archive boxes. And then once I feel after a few rounds of this that I have been able to draw out a lot of the moisture, I will feel much more confident that I can put these in the archive boxes. If you saw the other video when I was conserving the letterbox of Alberta, um, I was using the cellulose gel as well. And it's just really just dabbing it on and it helps to, again, just conserve leather. I'm not looking to make this perfect. I wanna keep the patina, but I am looking to try to stabilize it for future so that we can stabilize the red rot that's already occurred in the hopes that it uh, stops for the time being or for a while. While I'm conserving it, you can get really quite close to the details here. You can see the beautiful embossing that was done and it's starting to really show once I put the cellulose gel on. Absolutely exquisite how much time went into these into these treasures. Mm -hmm.